kyukke sundan da ginga ta kyukke tugdan da gi ten yerme çıktı çingi lo ma kyukke kudan da gi lo ma kyukke sundan da ginga ma kyukke tugdan da gi Yerme çıktı çingi Shipeki choshime to tamare limashim ni de gempadi sange shinto mikte. Mindrala kam niryata yam. Sange chedan soge chanam lai jancho pardo dani kyapsu che dagi jinso gibe sonam ki drola pinchira sange drupare sho. Sange chedan soge chanam lai chancho pardo dani kyapsu che Dagi jinso gibe sonam ki Drola penchira sange drupa resho Sange chedan soge chanam lai chancho pardo dani kyapsu che Dagi jinso gibe sonam ki Drola pinchira sange drupa resho. Nil Buddha. In the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, I take refuge until enlightenment. With the practice of generosity and the other perfections, may I obtain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings.
qualcuno delle volte I remember this scene, these two masters, Ge Gelek Rinpoche and another Hindu master, a certain age, a lot of experience, great friendship between them, many, many years. And they had a, a conference um, that had been organized. It was a conversation between the two of them. And there was a theater filled with people. They were there on the stage, seated. They, wo they were about to start. They looked at each other, and they stayed looking at each other um, in silence for 45 minutes. And it, it was said that of the hundreds of people at the beginning, there was a little bit of what's going on, what's going on. And then there was a silence among everyone, a kind of union. There's a beautiful intimacy in silence. Staying and being able to stay in silence with someone requires a particular intimacy. And then at a certain point, they looked at each other, and then one said to the other, I love you. And the other said, I love you. Uh, me too. And they started a beautiful conversation. Um, often, I have this this feeling, this this beautiful feeling of being able be able to 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 stay in silence together, and not even meditating together, because meditating you're already doing something together, but just staying together in silence. I think it's a really important experience and requires a certain intimacy to to for it to happen. So these moments, even if they don't last a long time, we have this we have this brief moment of silence together, and it's difficult for me to to break the silence and actually begin. What sooner or later, I'll 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 be courageous enough to stay forty five minutes in silence. Each one of us, we die, we die alone. We, we're born alone, we live alone, and we die alone in the sense that no one can live our life for us. No one can experience our feelings, our, our joys, our sadness. Nobody can live th this for us. And th on this, from this point of view, we're alone. At the same time, we're not solitary animals. We're not animals. We are animals of, of a pact. We need to interact, to receive. We need to live together. This is s one of the most important things for us. Sometimes we have this idea, this individu individualistic point of view, that, that we need m our space, we need my space, my way of doing things. But one of the greatest tortures, um, one of the greatest tortures that's been invented by men, one of the worst tortures, what is it? It's, um, it's solitary confinement, where one is not only isolated from others, but is also isolated from night, from day, from the, ex from the outside world, and and it's most strangely, I in Buddhism, there are many meditators who actually go look for that. There's a monastery near Shigatse called Shalu, and at the entrance, there's a kind of meditation room um, for long-time meditators. And once they would enter to go on retreat, then the door was actually sealed. Um, sealed with rocks and mud and um, then there would be a little um, a small um, a small hole f to pass food and they would be there for y for for years um, and they th in particular they would um, do um, exercises to be able to levitate 
um, and after the r- after the retreat kind of party for the whole village, um, the one who was w- coming out of retreat, and there were specific exercises. Um, uh, even in the winter time, they would come out practically naked in the winter, and they would put very very heavy heavy and um, wet blankets on him wool blankets and that was they needed these meditators needed to dry these wet blankets in the winter that was a a sign that they did their retreat well but (laughs) that was a side note but as human beings we don't want to be alone we want we need others so we want to give we want to receive and one of the most important things in our lives is to be able to love and receive love to this this exchange we want to trust and be trusted feeling seen is incredibly important to us feeling that that others recognize my existence and I can trust I can and also being able to trust trust others and be trusted these are very important things in, in in life in general and we look for this in many different ways we in the relationship with our parents and within the couple with our co-workers we're looking to give trust to be trusted to love to be loved Sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're less successful, but it's something that we look for. Along our spiritual path, our process of inner transformation, the development of our inner qualities, our process of also of facing our own um, darkness, our own shadows and growing, this exchange is fundamental. It's like leaving leaving for a long trip. One thing is if I'm alone, another is having um, people to accompany me. I I'm sure you've you've I'm sure you've you've already had um, this experience that of of doing something thing that if you ha- were alone is something you don't want to do and sure nobody can can walk for you but just being with someone gives you that extra push that extra strength so there's a difference between a teacher and a spiritual guide not in relationship to the person but the but in relation to the relationship that's created because what's the function of a teacher to transmit knowledge and in, in this is what i mean by teacher in this context the one who teaches the one who has the the job of transmitting something on could be on cooking or um, philosophy conceptual things or or experiential but the function is to teach something very noble and important it's a fundamental um, role there's another kind of relationship the relationship with a spiritual guide guru in Sanskrit Lama in Tibetan what's the main function of a guru of the spiritual guide of the Lama, not to teach, but to bless, to give blessings. It's not a ceremony. It's a connection uh, made from heart to heart, mind to mind, and that interaction helps me tr- transform along my path. One of the most important aspects is trust and faith and love that we create that gives us certainty along our path. So what the one who we call guru can also be a teacher. One can be a guru without being a teacher. One can be a teacher without being a guru. There are the four categories. 
one one is only one or the other one is um, both or neither of the two but it's important to make this distinction also in the guru puja for example when we make the tsog offering for example there's a part that says tenzin nada chale jing tenzin nada ching le gin emaho to so and there are the various offerings that we make to the uh, to the guru. What are we doing? We're asking through the offering to receive blessings. We're not saying, please teach me. No, we're asking for blessings of various types. And these blessings, it's difficult to put them into clear, um, to, uh, to clear be clear about what they are, but it's this, this relationship of heart to heart. And when we're in the presence of our guru, it touches us positively. It, in Tibetan, jokingly sometimes, it says when we're near someone who's very angry, for example, it, it can happen that we don't feel well when we're near someone who's very angry. We can say we've received his blessings. In this, in the, in the opposite sense of the w of the word, but the idea, you get the idea. How many times have you gone? Ha how many times have I did I go to see my master Lama Ganjin Rinpoche, and simply being in his presence and asking a question, I would already find the answer, as if being, being in his presence, it already moved something within me without having a concrete answer. This is another aspect of blessings. We can receive them blessings through words, physical actions, through thoughts, an image, a memory, um, something that we interact with. And that interaction transforms us virtuously, makes a positive, creates a positive effect. And this happens not only, not only with our spiritual guide, but this is valid for all the relationships that w that we have, because when there's sincerity, when there's exchange, that helps. It's fundamental. It's something fundamental. In just a few words, we as human beings, we need, we need to be accompanied. We need comp. We need company. In other words. It's not a question of of uh, of being weak. Uh, no, it's a question of loving and being loved. To walk together, have this feeling of connection. And then there's the other aspect. Well, if I want to follow a path, oh, so if I want to go somewhere th um, that I've never been. If I have a relationship with someone, um, a relationship of love and faith and trust, um, and this person has been there, I can really entrust myself. For some reason, at the beginning of Buddhism in the in the West, uh, also a Hinduism happened too, in the this idea was created that having a guru means um, being putting yourself in someone's hands and losing your own um, autonomy. And I think that's a wrong understanding. If I put myself in the... If you put yourself in the guru's hands, you still have your own feet. Um, if when Lama Ganshan had l had rows of, of people to to waiting for blessings or 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 w when we would we would go um, by car with um, together with Lama Ganshan, um many, many people would come out village after village. Um, they would be there lined up to be just touched on the head or, or be um, 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 be blessed even by, um, by being blown on. 
and just <laughs> thousands and thousands of people lining up, waiting to be blessed. And I remember this scene, I was seated in the back um, and and there was um, also the abbot of Chatran and Lama Ganshan uh, was there as well. The older people who who were asking for blessings, they would ask in this way. They would say, So bless me, bless me so that I'm not reborn in the hell realms. And and uh, and the abbot would say, if you don't go, then I'm not going to send you. In the sense, um, it's kind of a way that 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 they learn to ask for blessings. Um, and then the abbot just joking, kind of di in local dialect. If you're not on your way, if you're not going there, I'm not going to send you there. Uh, and for me, this represents this aspect like saying, I, if I go to the doctor, th can the doctor cure me? No, he can give me a treatment. He can tell me what to do, what to not do, and then it's up to me to follow that treatment. And in the same way, I go to someone that I trust spiritually, that one cannot do for me. He can or she can accompany me, help me along this process this path that I'm walking. And for me, thi this very clear aspect, here I am in this context where I am here to concede refuge. The first time that I did this in Brazil many, many years ago, L Lama Ganchen told me to, to do it. And I said, me, no. He said, no, no, it's <laughs> now it's up to you. Uh, but the reason why I said no that time, not because I didn't want, but th th I, the f th I was thinking, well, who am I? And what he said to me at that time was, our, our job is not being for, being to do for others or to do for people. We're here to, to, to walk together. Here we are all together, so let's try to help each other in the best way possible. Let's try to walk this path together, personally speaking. And I'm not saying, I mean, I'm f far from being perfect, but if there's something that I can be really proud of is having always cultivated a pure relationship with my masters, I mean love and trust, a uh, relationship uh, built on faith and a deep relationship. And this is something that I bring with me and I can share. And th th then there's the aspect of, of knowledge. One can be, you know, better or, or, um, or, or not at, at explaining things. But the point is, here we are walking this path together. So I don't have this is this expectation um, it of um, being able to 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 do anything for s for anyone but I know that we can walk together where it's important that we're together and the love and the trust that we generate is fundamental because love and trust, regardless of the relationship, it's something that needs to be maintained. So it's important for all of us to renew, cultivate this trust, this love that we have. This is something that should be cultivated within and then we do it when we can do it um, together and that's where the refuge ceremony uh, has come about we take refuge in the Buddha who shows us the path in the Dharma which is the actual refuge and the Sangha this, this 
spiritual company that a comp- spiritual company that accompanies us along the path and the guru who is the embodiment of the of buddha dharma and sangha it said that buddha shakyamuni at the beginning there was refuge in dharma exclusively which is the actual refuge and then the refuge in buddha was introduced he who can who gives refuge and then and then the refuge in the sangha was also transmitted so even if there's buddha and dharma without the sangha it get it it can't be upheld imagine a hospital without doctors would be chaotic let's say okay there are doctors but no medicine what can doctors do without medicine not much okay what about doctors and medicine but no nurses what happens to the hospital chaos all are needed and in the same way along our spiritual path we need um he or she who guides us who takes us hand by hand who is an example for us of what we want to become what we want to develop I- along the path is, is he or she is an example for us and uh, and is able to guide us we need the medicine our own practice our own study meditation our putting into practice the teachings our own path of growth and we also need the sangha we need spiritual community that upholds us along this path an error that we do every once in a while is idealizing these three in idealizing the three i see this attitude every once in a while and let me say it right away so that you know that it's something to avoid the tendency of idealizing i take the uh, buddha guru sangha i i put it on a pedestal then i say oh guru sangha i take take refuge in you perfect i see everything perfectly in you and ev- once everything's perfect uh, then we take up a, a rifle and then we look for defects I don't know if this image is clear enough. This is when one idealizes to then test it. Is it really like this? Oh, I saw that thing that doesn't correspond to that idealization, so I can't trust completely. This happens more towards sangha. It's quite common. It's difficult to take refuge in the sangha. because we have an idealized image of sangha the spiritual community should be perfect if it were if it were if it were perfect then they would all be buddhas and not the sangha there are other people like me who are there are uh, trying to walk along this path one step at a time one they mm, takes a few steps forward a, te- t- a step backwards and w- every step that others take is helpful to us i'm convinced that the a sign of being mature along the path is when we are really able to take refuge in the sangha these are important signs at the beginning is more difficult our initial tendency is to take refuge in the guru we idealize the guru uh, we don't know anything about um dharma and sangha and then we learn how to take refuge in the dharma which is the actual refuge and then refuge in the sangha and the three together are are what upholds our path why do we formalize the taking of refuge something that happens within on a deep level because it's something important and important things should be um protected and when we verbalize things we say it's like this that somehow that solidifies it gives stability to something and so 
for that reason, the taking of refuge should be renewed possibly every day and then formally renewed it, um, from time to time because it's a declaration of love. Where I say, I trust you, you trust me, we walk together. And it's something that for me personally is one of the most precious things that, that I've ever had. And it goes beyond the ceremonial, formal aspect. That just helps us um, s um, formalize something that happens actually inside. It should be done with uh, awareness. It takes time. There's no hurry. Now we will do the formal aspect of the taking of refuge. And it's not because you are here that you have to take refuge. If you asked, you ask yourself, um, you know, um, if you should or shouldn't, let's say there are three attitudes uh, in front of the spiritual practice, the Dharma. There's the first one is the tourist practitioner where one goes somewhere and and looks around, says it's nice, sometimes leaves, sometimes comes back. Um, like going to a new city and, and you visit the city, you appreciate it and you leave. And then there's the amateur. The amateur says, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to come. I'm going to come a little bit. Um, I'm not the tourist. I don't. I'm not a resident or a tourist. I'm the kind of mi I'm in the middle middle way. Uh, maybe I go every weekend. I get closer. And then there's the so-called professional practitioner who says, "I am going to integrate fully." the um, the dharma into my life and not just ev not just here and there it's a gradual process so the, the, the refuge is where one takes the commitment to become a professional practitioner or one says i trust these teachings i trust this this path and these guides i trust this lineage and i I've had my experience. I want to walk in this direction. I entrust myself. And that's when we take refuge fully. It's said that normally one should wait about 12 years before taking refuge. And that's how it was done in, in India m more than 1,500 years ago. Times have changed, but these 12 years um, are still there as, as, as an indication that it's something that takes time. But when you feel it, you can do it. There's nothing um, that tells you that, no, it's too soon. It's something that comes from deep within, maybe even after a few months. It's, it but it's important to look uh, and ask ask oneself do i really i really want to dedicate myself full time which doesn't mean abandoning family or work no it means integrating the teachings in every aspect of our lives if you want to do it within this tradition as atisha said in the in the garland of the um, of the bodhisattva it says respect all spiritual practices and lineages but but choose choose and follow the one that 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 you like the most that um resonates the most to you so i have no I have no doubt that the whispered lineage of Gyalwen Sapa and the, the Gelupa tradition of Lama Tsongkhapa come down to me all the way through Lama Ganchen Rinpoche. I'm absolutely convinced that it's the best lineage for me, the best tradition for me, but it doesn't mean that it's 
the best for everyone. There are many systems, many traditions for which I have great respect. I think that we, everyone needs to, needs to experience. So it's important to use the tools that that we choose that that work for us but maintaining respect for all other other um traditions and lineages it's not that we say oh i follow buddhism and other traditions are not valid we can learn from every tradition but it's important to maintain a coherence within our own because every system has every tradition has its own system has this certain level of, of like coherence within and taking refuge means wanting to integrate the dharma into every aspect of our life it means entrusting this lineage and trusting the spiritual guide that's one of the prerequisites we can stay in the taking of refuge. If someone asked me before, Lama, you've given me so much. I'm great. I'm deeply grateful for everything you've transmitted, everything I've received. I feel deeply, I feel indebted to you. First of all, there are no debts to pay back. This person asked, wh what can I do to pay you back? So what, what's the, what is, what is the way to quote unquote pay back? I mean, recognizing that there are no debts. So we can say that the spiritual guide is like a gardener. Who works the, gr the soil a little bit, uh, adds some fertilizer and w water, etc. What's the job of the flower? To, to flower, to, to blossom. The job of the flower is to blossom. And the best way that a flower can thank a gardener for everything he she did, the, the fertilizer, the care, the water, by blossoming. So if one along the path asks what he or she can do to thank his spiritual master, the answer is blossom. Of course, we can also help, help along the path, help others blossom. But our main job is to, is to blossom. I try, I try in the best way possible to help everyone blossom. Now we will formalize the taking of refuge. We visualize that above me, there's Lama Ganchen Rinpoche. Above him, there's his root guru, Kyapche Trijan Rinpoche. Above Kyapche Trijan Rinpoche is Kyapche Pabongko Rinpoche, and so on until we get to Buddha Shakyamuni. It's important um, to know that when we take refuge, people say, how, what can I do? I've taken refuge with other masters. Can I take refuge anyway? Lama Tsongkhapa had more than a hundred masters. The more mature we are along our path, the more we're able to take refuge in the Dharma. The more teachers we have, the better, the better it is. The, the newer we are, let's say, um, the fewer masters we have, the better, because the tendency is to take refuge more in the, in the guide and not in the Dharma, and one could find incoherences. But if you, but no, if you take refuge with me, if you want to learn or l learn from any other master, it's important that it's good for you. I've seen people come to Lama Ganchen and say, Rinpoche, I like to go to this place, that tradition, that master, etc. And uh, the answer he always gave was, the, the most of the time, most of the time was, you go. What's beneficial, you can take. And what's not beneficial, leave it there. 
I'm uh, very few times. Sometimes I heard him say, "Maybe better not." Maybe, <laughs> maybe better not meant um, absolutely not. That was his 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 way. Um, when the few times that I heard him say, "Maybe better not." Um, and the times that people went against that and actually followed it, it went terribly. So if we, the point is, if we want to learn from someone, um, take what's beneficial and leave what is not. But I, what I ask is, I ask for um, a, a, a mutual trust, and we shouldn't try also we shouldn't try to show that we are something different from what we are so I ask for a great um, level of transparency well oh, sometimes I hear oh because in front of you um, in front of you Lama people are different and I think well um, um, I think well at least in front of me they act um, with more with more care but we should we're walking together, and we shouldn't be fearful of how uh, of of what we are. So, who would like to formalize uh, the refuge, the taking of refuge? You can stand up and um, um, do three prostrations. If you're here and you don't feel like taking refuge or re or renewing your refuge. There's no problem whatsoever. Um, you can stay seated. Um, if you like to formalize, you can stand and do three prostrations as a, s as a sign of respect. Then sit down with your right knee on the ground and the left um, um, and the left up uh, in this way, seated on your right leg with your hands in uh, prayer. Um, this is the way to make request. If it's terribly uncomfortable, then just sit normally. I've heard people have said, oh, Lama, I didn't um, take refuge because um, I couldn't sit like that. I mean, it's part of tradition, but um, and that's why we follow it. So visualize above me, there's my root guru, Lama Ganjin Rinpoche. Above him is Kyapche Chichen Rinpoche. Above him is um, um, Kyapche Paponka Rinpoche, our root gurus, those who among the many gurus are the ones who 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 touch our heart the most. And sometimes we can consider our root guru um, a mixture of gurus. And they go from Lama Ganchen Rinpoche all the way to Buddha Shakyamuni. From the heart of Buddha Shakyamuni, a flow of light and nectar that represents trust and love and faith. This light rays goes from heart to heart, from master to disciple, uh, from generation to generation until it gets to my heart. From my heart, this flow of light goes to the heart of each one of you, creating, revitalizing, this profound connection of love and faith and trust. So with the deep intention of wanting to get out of the cycle of suffering, with the sincere intention of wanting to help others get out of his own um, suffering and live a state of peace, we desire deeply to develop our own qualities like wisdom and love and patience, stability, concentration. We deeply desire to overcome our, our ignorance and selfishness and jealousy, etc. In other words, we desire deeply to 
get out of this of samsara and reach a so-called nirvana so that we can help others do the same and to do this we need help and that's and for this reason we take refuge we ask the guru who's inseparable from all buddhas to accompany us along this path hand in hand step by step to be with us um, along our lifetime at our death in the bardo and in our future lives we ask guru buddha to to help us as you repeat after me visualize that light rays that go from buddha shakyamuni to my heart absorb then into the heart of each one of you generating or renewing this deep sense of faith and trust repeat after me putam charanam gachami dharmam charanam gachami sangam charanam gachami dutiyam budam Sharanam Gachami Dutiam Dharmam Sharanam Gachami Dutiam Sangam Sharanam Gachami Tirtiam Budam Sharanam Gachami Tirtiam Dharmam Sharanam Gachami Tirtiam Sangam Sharanam Gachami Namo Guru Bye Namo Buddhaya Namo Dharmaya Namo Sangaya Namo Guru Bye Namo Buddhaya Namo Dharmaya Namo Sangaya Namo Guru Bye Namo Buddhaya Namo Dharmaya Namo Sangaya Namo Tri Ratnaya Sangye Chedam Sogi Chonamla Janchu Bhardu Dani Kyapsichi Dagi Jinsok Gibe sonam gi drola penchek sangye drubrasho nel buddha nel dharma nel sangha in buddha dharma and sangha i take refuge until enlightenment with the practice of generosity morality patience enthusiastic effort concentration and wisdom may I obtain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings in Buddha Dharma and Sangha I take refuge until enlightenment with the practice of generosity morality patience enthusiastic effort concentration and wisdom may I obtain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings Mahamuni Shakyamuni Soha Omuni Muni Mahamuni Shakyamuni Sloha Omuni Muni Mahamuni Shakyamuni Sloha Adesso vi porgo la domanda Now I'll ask you Tabino in Tibetan which means this is the path the method and you answer Lek So which means excellent and then I'll snap my fingers and from that moment the take the vow of taking refuge has been formalized will have been formalized so I'll ask you Tabino and you answer like so Tabino. 
Now you can sit normally. We imagine that all the masters of the lineage from Buddha Shakyamuni, they absorb one into the other until getting to Lama Ganchen Rinpoche at my crown. Lama Ganchen Rinpoche enters my crown and sits joyously on, the oat on an eight-petaled lotus flower at my heart. Let's recite together the taking of refuge, light rays and nectar, white, red, blue, yellow, and green in color come from my five chakras and absorb into your respective chakras bringing blessings of body, speech, mind, quality, and action. In the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, I take refuge until enlightenment. With the practice of generosity and the other perfections, may I obtain Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings.
from the de from the depth of our hearts we ask guru buddha our own guru inseparable from all holy beings from every guru to stay with each one of us in every moment of our lives to guide us in every word that we say every choice that we make every thought that we have to be with us during our lifetime at the time of our death in the bardo and in every future life we ask guru buddha to bless our body speech and mind and we deeply desire to become inseparable from his or her nature his his nature from my heart inseparable from the heart of my own guru lama ganjin rinpoche an emanation comes that goes towards each one of you comes to your crown becomes as small as a thumb sits on your crown in your same direction and gently enters into your central channel from your crown and goes down to your throat from your throat around your cent through your central channel and sits gently at the eight petaled lotus at your heart and in this way your body speech and mind on a very subtle level becomes inseparable from that of ba of guru buddha and you allow yourself to experience this inner state of profound peace inseparable from him full of love joy peace Dagge <laughs> Palden sawe lama rimboche dagi ninkar pede tenshola kadin chimbu gone jesunte chancho nimbu pardo tempare shun pakyuke kodan dagi lo pakyuke sundan dagi na pakyuke tudan dagi yi Yerme chikto chingi olo makyu ke kudan dagi lu makyu ke sundan dagi na makyu ke tudan dagi yi yerme chikto chingi olo Oma muni muni maha Shakya Munye Shoha Guru Buddha. Guru Buddha stays joyously at our heart. And we dedicate to dedicate all positive energy generated here so that every being can reach a state of peace and that so that we could n never be separated from a healthy path from our own guru so that we can grow gradually and reach a state of inner peace and then help other beings do the same Namkara Trinle Chokchur Gepadang 
Losan tempe drume sasum ki drove munsela taltu ne gyur chi kewa kuntu yanda lama dang tralme chuki pela long chutin sada lamge yente rabzu ne dorje changi kopa nyur tob sho nimo dele tsendele Nime kuyan delek shi nim sen taktu delek pe Kuncho sum ki chingi log Sum ki ngodrubu tsul Kuncho sum ki tra shi shun At dawn or at dusk, at night or midday May the three jewels grant us their blessings. May they help us to achieve all realizations and sprinkle the path of our lives with various signs of auspiciousness. May the three jewels grant us their blessings. May they help us to achieve all realizations and sprinkle the path of our lives with various signs of auspiciousness. De sol a sol, a noite ou ao meio-dia, possam as três joias conceder-nos suas bênçãos. Possam as três joias ajudar-nos a alcançar todas as realizações. Possam as três joias espalhar muitos sinais auspiciosos no caminho de nossas vidas. Ao amanecer ou ao anoitecer, por la noite ou durante o dia, podem as três joias conceder-nos suas bendições puedan ayudarnos a obtener todas las realizaciones y colmer el sendero de nuestras vidas con muchos signos de buen auspicio. Repite después de mí. Repeat after me. Sem chu sutro. Chu lam chutro. Lam la parche. May the mind become the Dharma. May the Dharma become the path. May the path be free from interferences. In this way, we conclude the taking of refuge. Now, for those who have taken refuge for the first time, you will be given a name that represents the entering a new spiritual family, which obviously doesn't mean having to abandon your, your, um, your biological family. It means you're, re you're being reborn in a, a, a new spiritual family. If you've already received, um, if you've already taken refuge and you already have a name, um, you don't need another name. It's not a, about collecting names. So if you've taken refuge with Lama Ganjan Rinpoche or, Lam or with, with Lama Caroline or in, um, in other 
previous moments with me or another master. You don't need another name. Tomorrow morning there'll be teachings at 8.30. And then I'm leaving on Wednesday for the United States. And I'll come back on Monday the 22nd. I will go to see Kyabse Chijan Rinpoche. So one of my masters, a master of many of us, um, he who has who has a connection with him or would like to connect it, if you'd like to offer something, um, obviously I don't, I'm not going to bring anything heavy, but if you'd like to give a kata or an offering, um, I can I can bring that of course. So um so me uh, before before Wednesday e for even those who are not here we can spread the word about this. Okay? That's it. That's so now those who have taken refuge for the first time please come up here to receive your name and the others um there's time to time for a quick um greeting if you'd like. A quick hello.